Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 19 of the chapter Organic Chemistry Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In the previous 18 videos, we have done the following subtopics. We talked about the tetravalence of carbon, that carbon has a valency of 4 and as a result of which it forms so many compounds and hence the uh, branch of organic chemistry. We talked of the structural representation of organic compounds. I explained the classification of organic compounds to you. Then we did, uh, we understood what is a functional group, what are homologous series. Then we did the nomenclature of organic compounds. And in the previous video, I told you about isomerism. The chapter talks about the organic chemistry, some basic principles and techniques. We have understood how to name the compounds. We have understood what com organic compounds are like, what their structures are like, how do we represent them. But when we, before we come to the actual techniques of separation and analysis of organic compounds, we still need to know a lot of basic terms or basic concepts. In this video, I'm going to start that. So we are going to, the topic here for this video is fundamental concepts in organic reaction mechanism. Other than this, the reaction mechanism, the, there are 10 more fundamental concepts that you would be understanding in the consecutive videos. That is before we come to the techniques of separation and uh, analysis. These 10 subtopics would be, you would understand what is the fission of a covalent bond, what are nucleophiles? What are electrophiles? You'll study the electron movement in organic reactions. We'll do the electron displacement effects in covalent bonds. Then we'll talk about the inductive effect. We'll talk about resonance structures. We'll talk about resonance effect. We'll do electromeric effect, hyperconjugation, and the types of organic reactions. So this is basically what are the subtopics that you expect that would be following this video. Right now, let us talk about reaction mechanism and the terms which are associated with an organic reaction. So coming to the topic of this video, that is fundamental concepts in organic reaction mechanism. Whenever we write a uh, chemical reaction, what do we do? We write the reactants, we put an arrow, we write down the products. So in organic reactions, usually the reaction does not take place in one step. And there are certain names given to the reactants and the products. So let us understand what these names are and what reaction mechanism is. The organic molecule or the organic compound which is undergoing the change or whose reaction we are studying, that compound is known as the substrate. Now this reactant is attacked by another reactant. So for any reaction to take place, you need two reactants. So one of them is the substrate, that is the, the compound that you are studying, whose reaction you are focusing on, or the raw material if you are preparing something. And the other substance acts as the attacking reagent. It attacks on it. When it attacks, that attacking reagent is also a reactant which attacks the other reactant, the main reactant, which we would call the substrate. Now, when both of these react, they result in the formation of an intermediate stage. An intermediate is one where the products have not been formed, but the reactants are undergoing changes. Both the reactants are not as they were before. They are undergoing some, some old bonds are breaking and new bonds are forming, but the, uh, the final product has still not been uh, obtained. So an intermediate stage is formed, which then that intermediate, which is formed by the combination of the attacking reagent and the substrate, that intermediate then undergoes cleavage of bonds, that is breaking of bonds to give you the product, that is the reaction, why you carried out the reaction, you carried out the reaction in order to get a certain product. Or you carried out a reaction in order to understand the chemical nature of this reactant, whether it was for knowledge or was it to industrially obtain a certain uh, product. Whatever was your reason for carrying out the reaction, you would get the product of that reaction, which is the main product. And in addition to that main product, you may or may not get other byproducts. So the product 
the for which you carried out the reaction may be more than one it may be one product or it may be more than one product so it will be product or products and the product since it is the main the other substance which is formed in lesser quantity or which one is not so important to us would be a byproduct many a times the byproduct in a chemical reaction would be useful in some other reaction it may be the raw material of another reaction or it may find some other use but that is not why you actually started the reaction you carried out the reaction mainly for the products so let us again understand these uh, the concept of a substrate what is a substrate the organic molecule since we are talking of organic reactions what are organic compounds compounds of carbon all right carbon and hydrogen basically and it is the bonds between carbon atoms that are breaking so the substrate or the main reactant as i would call it the substrate would be that reactant which is providing or supplying the carbon to the new bond it is that reactant which provides the carbon since we are talking of carbon compounds that reactant which provides the carbon for the product would be the substrate because that is the organic compound that is the whose reaction who is contributing without whom the reaction would not the product would not be formed in any case you even without the reacting re agent uh, reagent the attacking reagent you will not get the product but the, you can use different attacking reagents to get a certain product but the one the organic molecule the substrate that provides the carbon for the product or for the new bond that is formed that is known as the substrate so we say the reactant which supplies the carbon to the new bond is known as the substrate and the other reactant the one which is the other one would be which is not providing the carbon for the uh, for the product would be known as the reagent or the attacking reagent sometimes you have the substrate and the reagent and both of them are providing carbon atoms or both the reactants are providing carbon atoms for the product now how will you decide which one is the substrate and which one is the attacking reagent in that case your choice becomes arbitrary you have to uh, see which carbon which one of those i told you can be changed the attacking reagent you can change the number of carbon atoms there you can change the uh, compound there so you have to see which one is the main one on which your focus lies so if both the reactants supply the carbon to the new bond then the choice is arbitrary you have to make the choice and in that case the molecule on which the attention is focused would be known as the substrate so or you could say the reactant which is used in larger quantity sometimes you have the equal number of moles of both the substances in that case also that compound on whom your focus is would become the substrate and the other would be the reagent but here you may it is a decision that you took so since the choice was arbitrary it is not you know it's not a rule that this itself is the reactant and this only is the substrate but usually in such cases wherever your attention is that is the substrate and the other compound is the reagent in any organic reaction in such a reaction a covalent bond between two carbon atoms is broken or between a carbon and another atom is broken it's quite understandable this statement you know uh, we are talking of organic compounds and organic compounds are compounds of carbon so whenever an organic compound is going to undergo a change it is going to break the bond between carbon and another atom that carbon would be the other atom could be carbon or it could be another atom like hydrogen it could be oxygen it could be nitrogen it could be sulfur so carbon bound a covalent bond between carbon and another atom when that breaks and results in the formation of new bonds that is usually seen in such reactions organic reactions so we say in such a reaction a covalent bond between two carbon atoms or one carbon and another carbon at another atom which may not be carbon is broken and a new bond is formed now we come to the concept of reaction mechanism what is the mechanism of a reaction organic reactions as i told you usually do not take place 
immediately like you mixed two reactants and you got the products. In the case of uh, uh, mineral acids or ionic reactions, the reaction is very fast and it's an ionic reaction which is almost instantaneous. So the, you just mix the two reactants and you get the products. But in the case of organic compounds, the bonds are covalent bonds. And it takes time to break them, it takes time to join new bonds. There is a and what is breaking and making of a bond? It is nothing but the movement of electrons. Electrons are moving between two when they are present between two atoms, that forms a bond. When they move away, when they are displaced, that bond is broken. So these reactions, they usually do not take place in a single step. They might be slower reactions and the different steps may have different speeds. So in order to get, let us say I have, I open a factory and I'm, I've decided that I'm going to produce a certain organic compound. In order to get this compound, which is my product, I should know what is the raw material that I need, that is the substrate. What is the other reactant that I would require? Both of them are my raw material. And that main compound which is going to give me the product should be with me. And let us say that one step that is taking place is exothermic and the other step, for example, the formation of intermediate was uh, endothermic. You had to provide heat to break the previous bonds. So this step was endothermic. In the next step, those bonds broke. Bonds break, they give out energy. So that, that step was exothermic. So if the reaction is endothermic in one reaction and in, in one step and exothermic in the other step, you could change the conditions of the reaction when you get the intermediate and then get the products faster. So you must have the knowledge of what are the raw materials, what would be the product that I will obtain, what would be the byproducts that I get, and if I get the byproducts, what is the use of those byproducts? What is the intermediate that is going to be formed? If I understand the steps, if I understand the energetics, and what is the energy that is required? Do you have to provide heat or do you have to remove heat? What are the conditions that I need at every step? If I have the knowledge of how fast or how slow a step would take place, if I have complete knowledge of this entire pathway, then my planning and my strategy for the preparation of this product would be better. If I know nothing, about, I only know that these are the two reactants which if reacted, they will give me the product. If I don't know what temperature, the temperature should be about, let us say, 50 degrees Celsius. And I'm carrying out the temperature at 20 degrees Celsius because I don't know that the temperature, if it is 50 degrees Celsius, it will be more helpful. I have no knowledge of the energetics of the reaction. Then I thought the reaction is going to, as soon as I mix the two, I'm going to get the product. But the reaction took, let us say, five hours. I'm not prepared for that. So you must have a complete knowledge of the steps. You must have knowledge of the energetics. You must know what is actually happening, where, what is the movement of electrons? That is, which bonds are breaking, which bonds are forming. Once you have a complete knowledge of the entire mechanism of the reaction, it helps you to understand the reaction and it helps you if you are producing a certain compound whether it is for business, that is for your industrial production, or it is just for your knowledge sake, the knowledge of reaction mechanism really helps you. So reaction mechanism, what is it? A sequential account. You know, did you see that what happened? The, attack, the substrate and the attacking reagent reacted together and then resulted in the formation of intermediate. In the next step, the product and byproduct were formed. It is not going to be like the attacking reagent will come and attack the byproducts. You must know it is there is a sequence to it and the reaction takes place in the same steps, in the same sequence. So it is a sequential account that is you are writing it down or you're giving a complete information of each step of a reaction, describing the details of electron movement. Where did the electron go? which bonds broke, which bonds were formed, energetics, that is how much whether the step was endothermic, was it exothermic, how much temperature is required for each step. So you need to 
the in sequence first we have to keep the temperature at 50 degrees then we have to keep the temperature at this uh, in the second step that is when once the intermediate is formed we need to change the temperature so you should know the energetics during the bond cleavage and the bond formation and the rates of transformation in every step what was the speed of the reaction which is studied under chemical kinetics energetics is covered under thermodynamics and the speed of transformation of reactants is studied under chemical kinetics so you must know the thermal you must know the stepwise what is happening to the energetics what is happening in thermodynamics what is happening in chemical kinetics that is what is the speed of every step and once you have the details of what are the reaction steps in terms of bond formation bond cleavage what was the bond that was broken what are the new bonds that are formed this complete sequential account is known as the reaction mechanism why should you know why is our interest in reaction mechanism why do we want to know the reaction mechanism if i'm a scientist i would just like to study the compound and therefore my interest may be purely that i'm curious i want to know i want to learn about the compound or if I'm an industrialist or if I'm simply just carrying out a chemical reaction for a small scale production in the kitchen or I'm carrying out a reaction uh, uh, like just making a cup of tea which is an organic reaction too. So either it is for your knowledge or for some reason you're getting a certain product and your knowledge of the reaction mechanism is important. So its knowledge helps us in understanding the reactivity of the organic compounds to, to basically understand the reactions and if we are producing it industrially or if we are producing it industrially or just for uh, our uh, or just for uh, on a small scale we it helps us in planning and strategizing how are we going to produce the product. So in understanding the reactivity of the organic compounds and for planning a strategy for their synthesis and to synthesize the products either industrially or personally for on a small scale. So this was the reaction mechanism and with this I will wrap up today's video. In the consecutive videos you know we are going to be doing the other fundamental concepts in organic reactions that is fission, nucleophiles, electrophiles, electron movement, all of these subtopics we'll be doing in the consecutive videos. So with this I wrap up. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.